Okay, today we're going to be talking about the uh, Tremos V Plus height gauge. File number 54199024. Okay, this, this height gauge does all your basic measurements. IDs, ODs, sun lines, heights, widths, depths, slots. Again, basically what a 80 to 85% of the CMM will do. Okay, let's go over the physical characteristics of the gauge. Uh, the gauge has got a measuring range of 0 to 24 inches. It's got an application range of 0 to 32 inches because we have this double probe hole. We take this probe and put it up here on the carriage. Uh, it's got a mechanical hand wheel. It also has a self-triggering probe so that whoever's taking a measurement will all get the same reading. Okay. The accuracy of the gauge is 1 tenth to 80 millionths over the range. Repeatability of 1 micron or 50 millionths over the range. Uh, Invariably, the gauge that you get will be better than that. This particular gauge is accurate to one-tenth over the range. It has direct RS-232 output, as you can see in the back here. It's got a uh, uh, air pump here, so if I hit this button, it'll move the gauge around. Okay. Uh, we have this in a range of uh, uh, 12 inches. This is the 24-inch, and we have a 40-inch gauge. The um, it also is uh, uh, powered by a charger. Uh, it gives it a trickle charge in the back. You can connect it here. Okay, when it's fully charged, you get up to about 40 hours of battery life. Okay. So those are some of the physical characteristics of the gauge. If we were to look at the um, display uh, in the keypad, you've got a number of different keys here, but uh, the the main keys you're going to be using 90% of the time are just three keys. Uh, this key, which is your reference key, and then your function key, which will bring you from diameters to surface measurements, uh, and um, in your zero key. Those are the three keys that you're going to be using 90% of the time. Okay? The other keys is you have a preset key, which means you can preset any value you'd like anywhere on the beam. Uh, you have a print key where you can send uh, data through the RS-232 output to a printer or uh, computer or any other data collection device. Uh, the other keys are your numeric keys. This is a delta key that you can use to, uh, it will remember your last two measurements and give you a sum of difference of those last two measurements. You have inch metric direct conversion. Uh, you have a min-max key, which gives you min, max, and TIR. Uh, we talked about uh, our zero key. This is our reference key. Uh, this is a key for resolution. We can have one-tenth or 50 millionths resolution. Um, and this is our probe constant key, which you'll, we'll go over that uh, shortly. So those are the keys. But again, 90% of the time, you're just going to be using three keys. Okay? You're going to be using your reference key your zero key, and your function key. Okay, now that we've gone over the keypad, let's turn the gauge on. This is our power key. When you turn the gauge on, the first thing it asks you is to reference the gauge. Okay? And basically that's initializing the scale. So what it wants you to do to reference is it wants you to bring this probe past these white lines here. Okay? So I'm just going to Bring the probe past that. When I pass those white lines, you're going to see that some numbers are going to show up. At this point, it's asking me to uh, give it a probe constant. Right? And to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to take this master, this probe constant master, which comes with the gauge. We're just going to come down and make a hit here. And we're going to come up and make a hit here. Okay, and it's going to give us our probe constant. All right, so now it knows what it's measuring with. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down and zero off of the surface plate. Here's our zero key we talked about earlier. Okay, so now three things happen when you take a measurement. One is you get a beep, which you sometimes can't hear when you're out on the shop floor. The second thing is you're going to get a probe icon that pops up here. Okay, so I always use that probe icon. Anytime you see that, you don't have to turn the hand wheel anymore. The other thing you have is you have some graduation lines here. So three things happen. You get a beep, you get a probe icon, and you get some graduated lines. That's when you know you've taken your measurement. Okay, so again, let's zero off of the surface plate. I come down, 
I get a beat, my probe icon, I get some graduated lines. Now, if I was to over, overturn this hand wheel, what will happen is I'll get some lines across here telling me, hey, I didn't get that reading. So what you do is you come down again, you set zero, and there we are. Okay, okay so now we'll take a measurement here. Coming down on this land, come down, make contact, there's my probe constant, there's my measurement from the surface plate, I'm at 4.9303. Earlier, if you, meant, if you remember, I mentioned the reference key. So now, I've got that measurement. If I want this step measurement, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to reference 2. I'll set 0 here. Okay, and come over here and get this step measurement. Okay, so from here to here is 5, 0.5117. Now, if I want to know where I am back here to the surface plate, I always have that in reference 1. So we maintain two references throughout the beam. Reference one, I call my main datum. In this, in this case, I'm using the surface plate. Uh, you know, you could have it on your print as the main datum being maybe the center line of this, this diameter. Um, but I call reference one my main datum and reference two my working datum because I'm changing that all the time. Okay? So, again, if I want to get this measurement from the surface plate, there it is. Okay, that's off of reference one here, and that's from the surface plate to that land. Now, if I want, again, if I want the distance from here down to here, I can go reference two, set zero, and come down and get that measurement. Okay, now if I want to know where that surface is from there to there, I always have that in reference one. Okay, so uh, Again, I call reference one my main datum, and reference two is kind of my working datum because I'm changing it all the time. Okay, so the other key we talked about was the function key. Right now, we're in surface measurements. If I hit this key, it puts us in diameter measurements. I know I'm in diameter measurements because I have this little icon of a diameter here, right? So the nice thing about this gauge and doing diameters, it's very fast and it's very accurate is I'm going to come in a little bit off center from my radius and I go to the lower radius first. I come down and I make contact and what I'm going to do is I'm going to sweep through that radius and when I sweep through that radius it's going to capture the lowest point of that radius. Okay? So I sweep through and you'll see that the numbers are moving and they'll freeze even though I passed the lowest point of that radius the numbers froze. Now I'm going to go to the top Make contact, sweep through the center. The center is giving me the highest point of that radius. So when I sweep through that center, it'll capture that and automatically give us the diameter. So that's the diameter of that bore. Okay? I don't have to look at any lights or any needles. All I have to do is sweep through the center. It'll automatically capture the low point and automatically capture the high point. And that's my diameter. Now, when I take that load off of the radius, it's going to give me the center line. Okay, and there's the center line icon. So that's the center line from the surface plate. That's showing me that from, from this surface plate to the center line of that bore, I'm at 3.3152. Now, I can take that center line and make that a datum. I can go to reference 2 here, right, set 0. And say I want the distance from the bore to this boss up here, to the OD. Now I'm going to go to the OD. I don't have to hit any OD keys or anything. I just come up, make contact. I'm in the lower radius first. I'm going to sweep through the center so I can capture the lowest point of that radius. Then I'm going to go to the top, come down, sweep across. Then there's the diameter of the OD. You see how quickly I can catch that diameter. Again, I didn't have to look at any lights or any needles. I just swept through the center. Now when I take the load off of that, it's going to give me the center line distance. There's the center line distance. So it's telling me from the center line of this diameter to the center line of that OD, I'm 1.5 inches. Now if I want to know where I am from the center line of this OD to the surface plate, remember I always have that in reference 1. Okay, so I've always maintained my main datum. Now if I want the center line of this OD to that land, <clears throat> let me go back to reference 2, set 0, come up here. I'm going to a surface measurement now, so I'm going to hit this key again. It's going to bring me to surface measurement. I'm going to come down, 
And there's the distance from the center line of that OD to that lamp. Okay, now if I want the overall for this, all I have to do is go to reference one. There I am. So you see how quickly I can move through a pot doing IDs, ODs, center lines, heights. Okay. Think about uh, think about a measurement that you probably do a lot and how long it may take, and that is the center line of that slot to the center line of that slot. Okay, that's a standard measurement that would take you some time normally, but with this gauge here, all we have to do is go into diameter mode. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this slot. All right, I'm going to go straight down, straight up. There's the width of the slot. When I take the load off, it's going to give me the center line. I can go to reference two. Set zero off of that center line. Come over here. Come straight down, straight up. And there's the distance from the center line of that slot to the center line of that slot, a little over an inch. So you see how quickly we can do that feature. Okay, so now we've talked about a lot of our basic measurements, IDs, ODs, center lines, heights, widths, depths. We mentioned earlier another key, and this is our min-max key. Okay, so if I hit this key now, it's going to say, uh, give me an icon showing me the minimum. I hit it again, it's showing me an icon for the maximum. And I hit it again, it's going to give me my TIR, or my, my max minus your min. Okay. So, when I'm in this mode, what I can do is I can come over on this surface, make contact, move around this surface, and it's going to show me the runout of that surface. Okay, and I can do that with a, with a cylinder or a diameter if I want to find the high point of a radius, or if I want to find the runout of a cylinder. I just put load on it, I'm in min-max, so it'll give me my max minus my min and my runout. Okay, or, I can hit this key again, okay, and that brings me back to minimum. So let's just say we want to find the, the distance from the minimum of this radius, this land. Basically what I can do is I'll come down here, make contact, sweep across there, it'll capture the minimum of that, okay. I can set zero to it, come up here, okay, go to surface measurement. That's the distance from the lowest point of that radius to that land. I can also, of course, go to the maximum. So I can come over here, find the distance from the maximum point of that radius. I can sweep across here. This is the maximum point. Okay, I can make that zero. Come over here, go to surface measurement. There's the distance from the highest point of that radius to that land. So you can see what the min-max and TIR feature can do for you there. Up to now everything you've been seeing is done with the 4 millimeter probe that comes with the gauge. We do have optional probes. You can get them in a kit form or you can get them individually. You can have extended length probes. You can have smaller diameter probes. You can have groove probes. I mean, you can also have like right angle probes. So there are a number of different probes that you can be using with this gauge, anything with an 8 millimeter diameter. All right, so let's quickly review. This is our Chemo's V Plus series. We also have a V series. It's a little less accurate and it doesn't have the air, but everything else is the same. But the V Plus is accurate to less than 2 tenths, 1 tenth, 80 millionths over the range, repeats to 50 millionths, uh, has an air pump, um, has direct RS-232 output, You've got a measuring range of 24 inches, a uh, uh, application range of 32 inches. We have it in a 12, a 24, and a 40 inch. It also comes with a five-year warranty. That's parts and labor. Uh, it's a very robust gauge. It's very easy to use. It does all your basic measurements, as we said earlier. Um, heights, widths, slots, IDs, ODs, center lines. Um, again, TIR, basically 80 to 85% of what a CMM will do. Okay, this is a gauge that uh, every machine shop or inspection area that has a surface plate uh, should have this gauge. It's Fowler 54199024. If you want to see it in your facility, all of our Fowler reps have this gauge to be able to show it to you.
Pretty much.